So we talk about three options. Real options and investment decisions. Okay, this, these are these are alternative. These are alternative investment decisions. These are alternative investment decisions. Available to the farm. These are alternative investment decisions available to the farm, include including including number one option option to postpone a project. But the manage the tanga postponed. So you, you, you push it forward. We have option to abandon. Option to abandon an existing project. Option to abandon an existing project. Number three, option to replace. Option to replace. The project with another one. Option to replace a project with another one. Another one. Option to vary output. Option to vary output. So your vary output that basically means that produce based on demand. Produce based on demand. So normally you will produce based on demand in the sense of in the sense that the, the demand needs some 10,000 units produce the 10,000 units. It's like a 15,000, so you vary the output. Not just you just not that you produce maybe one million units, will enough enough food. it is there for the market to produce anytime they want, but you produce depending on what the market requires. So you vary the output. Yeah. Can skip one line then you say this. <clears throat> we use we use annual equivalent value. We use annual equivalent value AEV to evaluate to evaluate the projects under real options. To evaluate the projects under real options. Evaluate the projects under real options, i.e., the option, the option with either, the option with either the highest positive AEV, the option with either the highest positive AEV or the lowest negative AEV. With either the highest positive AEV or the lowest negative AEV is considered. Is considered. So let's check the first papers. There's a question in uh, page 64. That is question 5B of May 2017. May 2017, 5 boy. Page 64.
Great. So let's uh, let's look at it. That long question that is there about tumor limited. Now we're told that uh, tumor limited operates the machine which has the following maintenance cost and recent values over its four year life. The purchase price of the machine is 25 million. So 25 million becomes our initial outlay, right? We have the maintenance cost from year one to year four, and we have the recent values. And by the way, I hope you all appreciate for recent value and salvage value is the same thing. The recent value, the salvage value, the scrap value, the terminal value, right? Not just in English, in Amanisha, the same thing. Cost of capital is 10 percent. Now, just to interpret and understand, you know, the sunset value will only arise when the project is coming to an end. Yeah. So sometimes you have to look at the question and have to, have to interpret to understand this question is testing on what? Like uh, sunset value, we have a sunset value in year one. We have another sunset value in year two of 10,000. Sun value in year three of 7,500, and year four, you get 500. Advise the management on how frequently the machine should be replaced. Now, if I use it for one year, it will have a salvage value of 15,000. You think that? And if I use it for one year, then that means the machine will not be there in year two. True? If I use it for two years, I'll get the cash flows of year one and year two, but it will not be there after the two, after the two years. So the salvage value will be 10,000. If I use it for three years, then I'll be getting the cash flows for year one, year two, and year three, but I'll not get the cash flows for year, year four, and so forth and so forth. Now, <clears throat> advise the management on how frequently. So as a solution, we just say this, We determine, we determine the AEB, we determine the AEB for each of the replacements, for each of the replacement options, for each of the replacement options. And you remember AEB equals to? And we divide by what? The PV farm, right? Cost of capital being up So you shall use 10% for N years. So Nazana could you Lisa? The first one is a replacement entry after one year. So if you use it for one year, then you replace. Do you have cash flows in year one? But I can put here this way. So this is year zero and year one. Year one is for me. Cash flows, I put here the PBIF so that I can get the present value. The cash flows are in thousands of shillings working out with the Fanyahako candle. In year zero, I spent how much? The 25,000. In year one, I don't know if that's going to be more clear. Let's use this approach. You're trying to be up on the second approach. Uh, so that the year to approach this other way, sorry for that. Year one, year one. And I can even have one year one. So that I have the initial cost. <laughs> the bonus of the So initial cost is 25 million. Yeah. Then can I have the maintenance cost? When carrying the maintenance cost of how much in year one? So this cash going out, is it 7,500? Cash is going out. Yeah. Then we have the recent value. 
the result value after one year, but then the result value is it a positive or a negative cash flow? It's a positive, clear. Of how much? 15,000. And we have the net cash flows. Year zero is negative 25,000. Year one, is it a positive of 75? The positive of 75, right? So can we have the NPV at 10%? That will be 7,500 times, so it's 10% one year. Chapo one or chapo two? Chapo? Chapo one, thank you. So 10% one year, but that object chapo two is the same, was in one year. Zero point? Nine zero? Nine one. Minus initial outlay of 25,000. What is our NPP? And it's a negative, so don't be afraid. Of how much? 80? 181. So I can do 182. So that is our NPV. Is the project good or bad? It's a bad one. Me, I would simply say you don't know. And I'll explain myself. Can we first of all get the AEV? So AEV becomes the NPV of negative 18,182 divided by the PV for 10% one year. 10% one year, I think I know it. Which is 0 0.1981. So how much is our AEV? How much? So in that negative 20,000. Now let me explain myself what I was saying. We don't know whether this project is good or bad. You know, we've only been given the initial cost of the project and we've been given the maintenance costs of that machine. Examiner Hajatupa, the, the revenues, Hajatupa, the cash flows that that machine will bring in. I think that. How much do you for the sales? We less the maintenance cost and other variable costs or the fixed costs. You can conclude that this project is good or it is, it is bad. But there is no information about the operations. Any information to me about this asset is what? The maintenance cost of the machine, the cost of the machine, and the resale value or the salvage value. No one is telling us about what results will the machine bring. So how do we conclude Kamani Missouri Amani? By the information rotates around the machine, but it does not give us any clue of the outcome of investing in this machine. How much sales will be brought in? There's no story about it, right? So that's why in finance, we cannot say that this project is good or bad, but we can only say that it has a cost of 20,000. And that is specifically the cost associated with the machine. That's how. The revenues that will come in, let them give us before we make a conclusion. Great. So that is the replacement every one year. We look at the second one. Replacement every two years. Replacement every two years. So use the same concept to have the year. We have year zero, year one, and year two. We have the initial cost. We have 25,000 in year zero. We have the maintenance costs.
in year one, we shall incur how much to maintain the machine? We have to maintain it at 7500, right? In year two, we'll maintain it at how much? How much do we see? 11. Thank you. It's a negative cash is going out. It will not be there in year three. We have the resale value. So resale value of year one, how much? 15,000, but please don't try 15,000, write the dash, because now you're becoming a liar. Can you resell in year one, then resell in year two? Can you resell in year two? So resell in year two, thank you. So resell in year two, and resell it at how much? So resell value in year two, the 10,000. So get the net cash flows. Year zero, you have negative 5,000. Year one, we have negative 7,500. Year two, we have negative 1,000. So the net cash flows twenty five thousand in year zero, twenty five hundred in year one, and one thousand in year two. Can we put the PVIF at ten percent? In year zero, it is one, right? In year one is zero point ninety nine one. Year two is zero point. Eight two six four. Eight two six four. And we have the NPV. And a direct. So twenty minus one is a two. Is a final direct. So five thousand plus seven five hundred times point nine zero nine one plus one thousand times point eight two six four. Your answer will be negative because of the negative. Thirty-two, six forty-five. Right. Right. But you don't stop there. We must get what? We must get the ADV. Remember the concept? Which equals to NPV of negative 32,645 divided by the PV for 10% for how many years now? For two years. So this is 32,645 divided by 1.7. Seven three five five. How much we have? Eighteen. 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 Eight ten. The negative, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So replacement every three years. Replacement every three years. Uh, 
three years, a year, three years, 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 so the option that offers the lowest negative AEP is the best way. Senior. So which one offers the lowest? Senior. Every one year was negative 20. Every two years, negative 18. Yeah. So have you told them what to do? We want my English. Okay. Ah, so adverts. A replacement should be made. A replacement should be made every three years. A replacement should be made every three years. Now, uh, Skumbuki the story to get your homework. Seriously? Now check November Number page nineteen to A. Kanga Limited, we are there. Sleep on it. Ah, we better take off home at the water last class one. From Kangara. From Kangara, I said to me. At a mini. Okay. Uh, so then uh, if that is the case, I think I'll try getting another question on uh, real options, hypo for past paper past uh, I think I'll, I'll look for the other past paper so that I also share. But it's too bulky for you to print, so you can use it the soft copy. So I think it starts from 2 or 3, 2 or 3 to 2015. You can't find before December. Go to a new page and talk about portfolio theory and analysis. Only theory and analysis. Now, uh, the big topic now about the portfolio, it, it just tries to explain the benefits of not investing in one company alone, the benefit of diversification, the benefit of spreading the, the risk. This is a topic that says that don't carry all your eggs in one basket, diversify. 
and the objective of diversification or the objective of forming a portfolio is on basically to maximize your returns and to minimize your risk. So let's say this, the portfolio refers to, so we'll talk about it as a continue writing something, the portfolio refers to a collection, a collection of investments. Portfolio refers to a collection of investments with the key objectives, with the key objectives of the key objectives of Burger Full Stop CBD number one to maximize the returns, to maximize the returns, and number two to minimize the risk. maximize the returns and number two to minimize the risk and by the way those two defines the entire topic it's about the return and the risk so let's say something on the portfolio return portfolio return that is rp return of the portfolio rp return of the portfolio so you say it is the weighted average. It is the weighted average of the returns. It is the weighted average of the returns of assets in the portfolio. It is the weighted average of the returns of assets in the portfolio. E.g. E.g. for a portfolio, for a portfolio, made up of assets A and B. For a portfolio made up of assets A and B, full stop and comma, RP equals to the weight of A times the returns of A plus weight of B times the returns of B. The return of the portfolio would be the weight of A times the returns of A plus the weight of B takes the returns of B. That's why we say it is the weighted average of the returns in the portfolio. We just put a standard for same. Portfolio expected return. Portfolio expected return. That is a ERP. ERP, expected return of the portfolio, is simply is simply the weighted, the weighted expected return. So it's simply the weighted expected return, i.e., i.e. So the expected return of the portfolio becomes the weight of A times the expected returns of A plus weight of B times the expected returns of So the, the portfolio return, the weight times the returns. Portfolio expected return, the weight times the expected return. And how do we get the error? The net error divided expected returns of A. Put some errors in Pura. How do we get the expected returns of A? Equals Michelka equals so semi equals. Huh? So much Nandika. Then? Yeah? Namahali yeah? risk, a bad of Jeff Kier risk. Then? Return times. It's a monopoly of my confidence. The summation of? And I'm looking at you because you said the truth. <laughs> Returns of H X what? The probability. And sometimes you have the truth, but you're not, you're not sure if it's true. Or, come up with a probability. 
change where you can. Let's change the average. Thank you. So the summation of the returns of A divided by A. That's simply the average total over the number. So that, that, that summarizes what the portfolio return or the portfolio expected return stands for. Then after that, let's talk about portfolio risk. Portfolio risk. Let me say, it is measured using it is measured using the standard deviation. It is measured using the standard deviation. So anyway, you're being asked about calculate the portfolio risk. That is somebody asking you to calculate the standard deviation of the portfolio. The portfolio risk is measured using standard deviation. So standard deviation, the initial year, can you, you can use that one. Come on your handwriting in boom. And how do you get the SD? Square root of? Square root of variance. It's true, by the way. Square root of variance. And how do you get variance? Please don't say that patient square. <laughs> So variance equals to who got baby class? Now formula name for later. More pay accepted. Baby class who got it? Uh huh. Now uh, remember. The portfolio has two assets, asset A and asset, asset B. Now we are simply bringing together the risk. We are bringing together the standard deviation of A and B by using their weights. Portfolio plus Magnus Yakapamoja. The weight of A, weight of B, and the standard deviation of A and the standard deviation of B combined together. So therefore, we shall start with the weight of A squared times the variance of A. Variance is standard deviation squared. So that is the weight of A squared times the standard deviation squared of A, or simply the variance of A. We add, repeat the same for B, weight of B squared times the variance of B, plus two times weight of A, times weight of B, times what? Times, I finished when I started. Covariance of A B. This is a Zimba. But one day to exam. Will exam Malaysia? The guy shall be here. What is more important if we do how to calculate is a component sub and that. How do we get standard deviation of A? I know it's the square root of variance. How do we get the standard deviation of security A? Square root of? Summation of standard deviation of expected FTV. How are we getting that standard deviation? Summation of NPV minus expected NPV square times what? That's how badala NPV for the returns of A. Badala expected NPV for the expected returns of, of A. We borrow from each other. 
सोशाने का फॉर्मूला सोशाने की एलपीवी सो इट इज द रिटर्न्स ऑफ ए माइनस एक्सपेक्टेड रिटर्न्स ऑफ ए सो समेशन ऑफ द रिटर्न्स ऑफ ए माइनस एक्सपेक्टेड रिटर्न्स ऑफ ए स्क्वायर टाइम्स द प्रोबेबिलिटी ना कमा हाकुना प्रोबेबिलिटी इन अ बुकर की सेम चलिए के स्क्वायर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ ठीक है समेशन हाय समेशन ऑफ returns of a minus minus error square over n plus or minus n minus 1 kama apna probability square so that one will help us to get the standard deviation of a the standard deviation of b ways to talk what we have ndio so that we Remind ourselves how to get the covariance of AB. Remember, the covariance of the reminding is just teaching. Covariance AB equals to the summation. The returns of A minus expected returns of A. You combine with the returns of B minus expected returns of B. That's the probability. So the returns of A. So we are combining A and B. Returns of A minus expected returns of A. Returns of B minus expected returns of B. And everything times the probability. Kama hakuna probabilities, then this one will not be there. But you'll divide by what? N minus one. So if I go by the or, that's what we get to the final. This is the probability. Don't wrap the probability. We got or. So there will be no probability, but there will be the, the 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 number of the number of outcomes. Now we have two ways of calculating the covariance. Alternatively, covariance of A B. Alternatively, covariance of A B equals to the something called correlation coefficient. Nakwanga al. Correlation coefficient of A B times Standard deviation of A times standard deviation of B. R, two and a half R. So a small R to the kind. I'm a one digit something that looks like E. So it is not by the kind. But the issues to keep out there. Jamu bimu nukuya chinira malisha. You can even write for full. A full of A B. As long as you know a full stands for correlation coefficient, because but then casually, how to know the initials? Casually, you have to know the statement. See here, correlation coefficient is of this much, so that you know where to apply. The most important thing, knowing where to apply it. The initials, not very that, not very much that important. So I can even decide right here as A of A B. I don't know how to penalize you. As long as you know, A stands for correlation coefficient, not R. Right? Chamuhimu ni. What does your what does what does your initial stand for? That's the most important thing because kuswali how to know the initials kuswali kuda kwa the what coefficient of correlation ama correlation coefficient. That's all. So maybe uh, we are going to find this one. Why this one equals to correlation coefficient? For example, we will say. That's all. 
So that covers the portfolio return and the portfolio risk. Then you can give me an NP. You can give me an NP. We say to determine to determine the weights of a two asset portfolio. Determine the weights of a two asset portfolio. That minimizes that minimizes the risk. That minimizes the risk into brackets where where standard deviation equals to zero. Where standard deviation equals to zero. So to determine the weights of the two asset portfolio. What I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to drive out is, is this. Sometimes examiner at upside of Pateti, I'm a story of Pateti, variance of A, variance of B, or variance of A and B. Alafa Nakuliza, what should be the weight of A and what should be the weight of B where this answer is zero? At which the standard deviation of the portfolio is minimized and it should be minimized when it is zero, it is not there. So, so determine, to determine the weights of a two asset portfolio at which the risk is minimized. Still, comma, we simply use we simply use the minimum weighted formula. We simply use the minimum weighted formula. The minimum weighted formula. I.e. I.e. So we have a weight of A would be equal to, so weight of A equals variance of B minus covariance of AB. Divide by, I'm going to explain where it's coming from. We take the variance of B plus variance of A Minus that one. Let me just explain where the formula is coming from. Uh, we can have two ways of calculating it, by the way. There's a long cut and there's a shortcut. Formula is the shortcut. And where is this formula coming from? You see this equation? That's a you could have to make W at the subject of the equation. That's how. Because that's you could suit up one and because here the variance of A, right? Put up one B, variance of B. Now to have one variance of AB. It's crazy. So by making W A the subject of this equation, they arrived at this formula to make life easier for us. Because we are asking ourselves, what should be the weight of A? To ensure that the risk is not there, the risk is minimized when the standard deviation of the, of the portfolio is what is zero. It's zero. So that will give us the weight of A. And if that is the weight of A, what will be the weight of B? Huh? The variance of B. No, that a variance of A. Still, variance of, of A minus the covariance of A B divided by Plus but variance of A plus the variance of B minus two for variance of AB. I can simply say that once I have this one, the weight of B becomes one minus weight of A. Because I know total weight should be one. Yeah. Total weight should be one. Ah, then let's talk about decision making. When we go to the of finance, kill a topic, kill a topic. We are finance people. Finance people don't leave problems hanging. Finance people provide solutions to the problems. 
investment decisions, Lekona decision making, advise the management. Even for portfolio, we must advise, we must make a, a decision. Is it a good one or it's a bad one? Should we invest in this portfolio? Should we maintain or should we change the composition of this portfolio? So decision making, we say this. We compare, we compare the expected return of the portfolio. We compare the expected return of the portfolio with the capital market line. We compare the expected return of the portfolio with the capital market line into bracket CML. Yeah, we'll stop the list. I'm going to explain what capital market line stands for and what it represents. But let's first of all give the comparison. We say if if expected return of the portfolio is greater than the CML, if the expected return of the portfolio is greater than the CML. We accept, we accept, we accept sales. Sales. The portfolio is super efficient. Since the portfolio is super efficient, stroke superior, stroke undervalued. The portfolio is super efficient. Stroke superior, stroke undervalued. By the way, uh, when you want to make an investment decision, you make an investment decision on something that is undervalued or overvalued. Which is a good investment? The undervalued or overvalued? Let's valued. <laughs> Under or over? You should always go in for an undervalued investment. So yeah, why? It has space for growth. When you go in for an overvalued, the only option in your budget is to lose value. That's not a good one for you to go with, right? But you invest in one that is undervalued because you grow with it. And as it grows, you are making way. So a super efficient is the one that is undervalued or it's superior. That's our next point. If ERP, if ERP is less than if ERP is less than the CML, the portfolio is bad. If the expected return of the portfolio is less than the capital market line, comma, the portfolio is bad. Since, since it is inefficient, it is inefficient, stroke inferior. Overvalued, which is inefficient, stroke, super, stroke inferior, sorry, inefficient, inferior, stroke overvalued. Inefficient, inferior, comma, overvalued. The next summer, if ERP, if expected return of the portfolio is equal to CML. That's what the portfolio is what? The portfolio is valued. The portfolio is there. <laughs> oh, you go to <laughs> ah, the portfolio is correctly valued. The portfolio is correctly valued, strong, efficient. Strong, efficient. So how you copy buy how you copy go to Apple? efficient then maybe give me a small sort of topic on a capital market line capital market line cml We say it is a straight line. 
it is a straight line that originates from it is a straight line that originates from the risk free rate of return it's the straight line that originates from the risk free rate of return and forms a tangent and forms a tangent with efficient frontier curve and forms the tangent with efficient frontier curve efc So maybe we can have an illustration. We can have an illustration so that it helps us to understand it better and easily. So illustration of CML and EFC. The capital market line and the efficient frontier curve. Suffered from a portfolio return. Again, next portfolio risk. And portfolio risk is measured using what? The standard deviation. So efficient frontier curve is a concave curve. The same the concave curve. And if you can have a straight line, just your good ruler, I'm like using my bad ruler. In originate this place is what we call the risk free range of return. Now, when, uh, as long as coming out, we looked at the point. As long as it has curved, that has curved inside. Upward. Now, I want us to have like uh, if this one is a uh, portfolio A, portfolio B. In portfolio C, right? With, uh, what kind of portfolio A? What kind of portfolio is A? Super efficient or inefficient? It has to be super still. Why? Because it's higher than what? Its returns are higher than the C again. Still. And when you look at portfolio A, B, and C, they promise the same level of risk at different levels of return. And at any point of investment, remember our objective is to minimize the risk, to maximize the returns. Clear. So A, B, and C, risk here only the same, C for somewhere else. But returns starts each of out. But portfolio A maximizes the returns. So portfolio A is, provide, is promising the highest return at this level of risk. And for that reason, it is a superior portfolio. This one is an inferior. I think that. And of course, portfolio B becomes an efficient because its return is equal to the CFL. You can look at it from that angle, and you can also look, it, look at it from a different angle. If we can call this one to be D, and this one to be E. 
right? Between D and E, which one is superior? D must be superior. Why? Because it actually on a low risk. Because its return is higher than the CML. Return your CML for your data quap. So it's promising a return that is higher than the CML. So the expected return of D is higher than the CML. And it is superior because it promises the lowest risk at the same level of return. Right? So for that reason, D is superior, E is inferior. So uh, we can just let's explain this of A, B, C, D, E to say portfolio A, portfolio A is superior, portfolio A is superior to portfolio C, portfolio A is superior to portfolio C since it promises, since it promises the highest return means it promises the highest return at the same risk level. Since it promises the highest return at the same risk level. When portfolio D, when portfolio D, D for dog, is superior to portfolio E, when portfolio D is superior to portfolio E, since it promises the lowest risk, since it promises the lowest risk at the same level of return, the lowest risk at the same level of return, since it promises the lowest risk at the same level of return. The next point to say maybe portfolio B, portfolio B is an efficient, is an efficient stock market portfolio. Portfolio B is an efficient stock market portfolio. Hence, hence its expected return. Its expected return is uh, represents, sorry, its expected return represents the return on the market. Its expected return represents the return on the market into brackets RM. And its risk, and its risk represents the standard deviation of the market. And its risk represents the standard deviation of the market. Into brackets, standard deviation of the market. So, Rudy Hapa, then what can this be a checkline? Hapa equal RM, which are the most equal standard deviation of M. So let me let me not uh, let me not derive the CML, but we can derive the CML, which will be the, the gradient of the straight line, gradient of the straight line equation. And our straight line is actually the CML. So let's just say this. If I just I just a mean. CML equation. CML equation can be derived, can be derived from the CML. 
ID. Mwambie tukua CML equals RF plus RM minus RF divided by standard deviation of the market times standard deviation of the portfolio. So to make a story more, we need to get to understand the concept of overvalued, undervalued, inefficient, super efficient. But because of the time that we have, I don't think we should waste a lot of time deriving the CMA. And that we do it. That we do it. But I know, can we, can we, make, can we get the gradient of the straight line? Here to see an EK. Gradient of the straight line. So one of the same thing is a triangle. Gradient equals to equals to changing changing y over changing x between the two and the y axis. It is small. Similarly, x. So, so from our triangle. Changing y, it's in Rm minus Rf. So Rm minus Rf minus Rf. A change in x, it's in this minus this. Standard version of the market minus zero. Which will be the standard version of the market zero. So standard version of the market. This story go in. That's how. Now if it's with the half back, it's in Rf. So it is this plus, right? Because the look at after the expected return. So if it figure half, but it is the RL, so it's from here to here plus the gradient. Then we have to bring in risk of the portfolio, which is the standard, the standard deviation. That's how. Because in finance, this one is what we call the risk premium. Ready to the formula. No one will tell you to be right. It's the application of the formula. That's how. So this formula is what we up compare. So we'll be calculating the capital market line. Then we compare with the expected return of the portfolio. If the capital market line, if the expected return of the portfolio equal to capital market line, we accept. If the expected return ikondogo kwa capital market line, we reject because it will be overvalued or inefficient. What's up? It's as simple as that. Any question? Do we manage a portfolio? Manage a portfolio. Like in equal four in one. We manage a part one. But you manage a topic the other way. But out of the four in one, he appointed the longest. He appointed the longest. I believe I have a point of defined. So that is for direct. This is the standard version of the market, standard version of the portfolio, expected return on the market, risk free rate. It's more direct here. Yeah. Ah, great. We can go for the break after the class is over here. Yeah. I'm not going to size. I'm not going to go fresh. The indicate capital asset pricing model. Small subtopic. Capel. Capel. Just when you've got to take a capel one. Capital asset pricing model. You can have it as number two. Portfolio theory for number one. So under that part two, we have the capital asset pricing model. Then he's saying it was introduced. It was introduced to correct 
it was introduced to correct the mistakes of portfolio theory. It was introduced to correct the mistakes of portfolio theory. Which considers, which considers the total risk, which considers the total risk as measured using the standard deviation, which considers the total risk as measured using the standard deviation. So portfolio theory is yom zuri. Kosabu in a consider the total risk as measured using the standard deviation. But you're saying that that is not the right way to go. So let's see, let's see the reason. Let's explain some maybe. In reality, in reality, portfolio formation, portfolio formation should diversify. Portfolio formation should diversify unsystematic risk should diversify unsystematic risk hence hence only systematic risk should be considered hence only systematic risk should be considered as measured using only systematic risk should be considered as measured using beta factor. As measured using beta factor, stroke coefficient. Beta factor stroke coefficient. So B on a swap. Initially, I can be on a swap. As measured using beta factor stroke coefficient and not the total risk. So as measured using the beta coefficient, with a comma, and not the total risk. So you should not consider the total risk. You should only consider the risk that cannot be diversified. That is the systematic risk. So maybe you can have a illustration. illustration. Illustration, illustration, systematic and unsystematic risk. Illustration of systematic and unsystematic risk. So you know we are we're just trying to be examiners. We're trying to we're trying we're trying to pretend to be the examiner. And at Ulisa, by use of a well well labeled diagram, differentiate between systematic and unsystematic risk. Should not get that question a lot. Not up. She does a diagram to go up. It's very it's very simple. So you have risk. Against the return, against the number of assets. So the risk against the number of assets. Illustration speak is a finance by this Napanga U of L. Napanga to N. N in a panga graph. That's how you mature in a time. Okay. In this part, we have unsystematic, unsystematic risk. I'm going to explain it. And now, what Pachini becomes the systematic. Then the total of the two, the total of the risk. This one is called useless. Useless risk. Useless 
Let's face it. A systematic plus and systematic gives us the business risk. Now, this is what uh, the, 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 the illustration tries to explain to us that as we are increasing our assets, as we are, in, you know, when we increase assets, we are diversifying, right? I had only invested in asset A, now I'm bringing in several other assets. I'm not carrying all my eggs in one basket, right? So I'm forming a portfolio. So as I increase my portfolio, the unsystematic risk is reducing. The more the number of assets, the lower the risk, right? It will reach a place where it has now stabilized. That's a risk in a I go. So I will perform a good portfolio. So I have diversified or have eliminated the unsystematic risk, right? But for the systematic risk, whether I have one asset or I have a million assets, this systematic risk will remain constant. High tie sugar. So it cannot be eliminated. It will always affect us. A good example is inflation. When inflation hits, it may hit. Whether you're in business A or business B. Yeah, that is the systematic risk. So it will never reduce. It will be constant forever. But unsystematic risk, as I'm increasing my investments, in end I sugar. But you get a high toy, high toy to sugar. So, ah, great. So my university, you conclude your story. Better, better, better. So they get better on Zuri. Better yet. Better refers to the sensitivity. Better refers to the sensitivity of security returns. The sensitivity of security returns. The returns of the general market portfolio. Sensitivity of security returns to the returns of the general market portfolio. I think there's a question somewhere, Tabo Dogo, that asked, uh, I think it's in 2015, that asked, uh, it required the candidates to, be, to define the better factor. Agapena, some two months. The sensitivity of security returns to the returns of the market portfolio. So it's a comparison between the security and the market. And I'll give you a leakage. When you know the formula of beta and you are asked to define a Nikachini formula. And if you have a formula, same formula as a statement. And if you have a formula, you will define Trust you me, you'll get all the marks on that question. So, you know when they are marking, they will laugh at you. But so let me tell you what happens such a case. So my English a better coefficient is the, 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 the sensitivity in the judge. I can a formula which is correct, na can a statement of your formula. And you end up getting running from 48 to 50 if you survive. Yeah. It's small, small things. By the way, this subject, passing this subject, is not for the genius, it's for the smart ones. The genius are talking about who are very thorough in everything. I think it's a kind of smart. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, I'm too genius at the doctor. That's what you require the sensitivity of Mazapateka, sensitivity of market security. For it, I mean, Changanya, Amanguka. But you just have to be smart. Anyway, continue by saying this. It can be calculated. It can be calculated using the formula. It can be calculated using the formula. Someone be a poor better of A. Mboka, we are sticking on our the assets in the portfolio, assets set to the equal asset A and asset B. Here. So better of asset A becomes covariance of A 
and M. M standing for market state. The same is the sensitivity of the security return to the market. So anytime you're talking about data of the security, it's a comparison between that security and the market. So, so, so covariance of A and M divided by covariance of A. Covariance of A and the market divided by the variance of the market, which are, I can use them, divided by the standard deviation square of the market, right? So this is one way of calculating better of a, better of an asset or better of a security. I want us to recall. I want us to recall, even if we are not able to. Come on to the power correlation coefficients. What are the correlation coefficients? The reduce the money area money. How do we get the covariance? Between A and A, if we have the correlation coefficients. The only way you can have an average for that is one of the other. Come on, you have to do Equals to? Demandisha. Yes. Yeah. Student deviation of times. First, let me talk to you about it. It is A and M, not A and B. So the correlation coefficient of A and M times the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of M. Now, if this one will give us the variance, can we put this here? See the variance. So, as I replace up a numerator. And it's a mekua, the beta of A can be the correlation coefficient of A and M times standard deviation of A times standard deviation of the market divided by variance of the market. E variance of the market, by the way, see the same as the same as doing this. See the same thing. Internet question square. So I can remove one by canceling one with. So that in one be a The beta of A can be equals to correlation coefficient of A and M times standard deviation of A over standard deviation of So I can use this formula to get the beta, or I can use this formula, depending on the information in my paper. The challenge of portfolio is that uh, when you are before to, to exhaust, we end up doing part A, and I skip part B to the part C. So I always prefer we summarize everything. And I'm sorry to pay attention to questions. So lesson one, your portfolio is not going to be able to do it. So for me, that's what I'm doing. I'm just saying that I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to do it. You're looking at me. Able to see, but we'll not go to number three. So let's go for one. So let's do the two. The two, then the remaining two we shall do next week. I think you're going to study. So, yeah, it's a, this is a topic that needs maximum three lessons. And you're done with it. Maximum three lessons. Yeah, that's an unpleasant agenda. Let's say the fourth one. But here's the other beyond the four. We'll be repeating a lot of things. But again, it's a topic that needs somebody to familiarize you. Because you see a borrowing from a lot of things. Yeah. If you miss one step, then this is not a topic. And this is a topic, you know, 
Covariance will never change. Familiarity is about covariance. Yeah. And if you don't know, you'll never guess it. Can you cram the can you get the formula of covariance? Cramming I know you are putting it. <laughs> but can you get the formula of covariance? If you don't know, you don't know. No. So this is a topic of you either know or you don't know. If you know, you enjoy doing these questions. If you don't know, forget about it. Start looking for other 20 marks elsewhere. Yeah, if you're not talking about portfolio, Narudia, to share Marisa our past 20 marks. So to go 20 marks number two. So to go to 20 marks number three, to go 20 marks number three, let's share Peter the 50 plus one. So to go 20 marks number four, we are now looking for an award. But at the end of the day, award me up, like any pass me end. So make sure you give us our pass. If you want an award, you can get it here. But if you get an award, come for 10 days from now. Let me know some questions like you are having a plan. Do you love me? Be proud. It's a deal. And you got a And you got a dad. If you're not allowed in the camp, it's a mere notification. The same as a power, the Arab is new. The same word of Mamanu Pajawa is for the Arab. The ten year generals. Ah, so. So, uh, say it is a pochini. Standard equation of the, sorry, better of the portfolio. Better of the portfolio. Beta of the portfolio into brackets PP is simply is simply the weighted beta. Beta of the portfolio is simply the weighted beta. My point is this: E formula. In that side, you are the better of assets in the portfolio. The portfolio has asset A and asset B. The better of asset A, we either use this formula, either of the two, depending information that it may be. But after getting the better of A, that's going to be better of B. Now, the better of the portfolio would be the weight of A times the better of A plus the weight of B times the better of B. Book a portfolio to require assets B, A, and B. Look at that. Now, but for E formula, by the way, better for the better of asset B is the same. The covariance between B and the market divided by the variance of the market, or correlation coefficient between B and the market times standard deviation of B over standard deviation of the, of the market. So, formula systems are part of the better of assets in the portfolio. Then you also conclude by saying better of the market, better of the market into brackets BM is always equals to two equals to one. Better of the market is always equals to one. So better of the market is always equals to one. Hence, hence, a portfolio is better, a portfolio is better, is less than one. A portfolio is better, is less than one. Is less risky, is less risky, hence superior. And superior when a portfolio is better is greater than one. When a portfolio is better is greater than one, is highly risky. It's highly risky. Hence, inferior. It's highly risky. Hence, inferior. Stroke inefficient. On the second year, overvalued, struck overvalued. 
Nikuwa highly risky yoni buyer. Buyer ni inferior, inefficient, or overvalued. Sindia. And of course, the portfolio cost better equals one is what? Submission. It represents the market. Aye. But the pattern of the decision making. You must make a decision before you say today. Decision making. We say we compare. We compare the expected return. We compare the expected return with the security market line. We compare the expected return with the security market line into brackets SML. SML. So get the difference portfolio theory, capital market line, CAPM, security market line. Portfolio theory is at the CML, capital market line, capital asset pricing model, security market line or SML. Those are some of the differences between CAPM and, and, the, and, the, and, the, uh, and the portfolio theory. So you compare the expected return with the SML, ID. If expected return is greater than SML, if expected return is greater than SML, you accept or you accept. You accept. Since, since the portfolio is superior, if the portfolio is superior, stock under value. If the portfolio is superior, stock under value. The next. If the expected return is less than SML, that's what we do it. We reject. We reject since the portfolio is inferior. Since the portfolio is inferior, stop over budget. Stop over budget. And of course, if the expected return equals to SML, if the expected return equals to SML, the portfolio is correctly valued. The portfolio is correctly valued, stroke efficient. The portfolio is correctly valued, stroke efficient. Then we get to what SML equals. RF plus RM minus RF times what? RF plus RM minus RF times the beta. And remember, RM minus RF is what? Sometimes I'm to figure out to And as I got Paris premium, but I'll put our end. So now, what to do poor, we can also get our SML by checking the RF plus. And to be a risk premium, we have to a risk premium. And the risk premium we want to pay by what? Can you remember how to calculate better? We'll confirm. I think we think we'll talk about number three. Maybe you can just write the picture for number three. So the third part is the multi-factor models. Uh, 
artifactor models. So let's let's pick up from there in our next class.